Hello everyone, welcome to the Smart Market Insight Show here on Calkine TV. I'm Rachel. Now last week on the 3rd of February, Westpac Banking Group came out with its first quarterly update of financial year 2022, declaring a statutory net profit of $1.82 billion. However, the bank reported a drop in net interest margin, which fell eight basis points to 1.91% in the reported period. Today, the smallest of the big four banks, Australia and New Zealand Banking Group, also disappointed investors with an eight basis points fall in its net interest margin for the quarter ending 31st of December. With ANZ and WBC already witnessing pressure on the net interest margin front, the market has now set its sights on two other leading banks that are set to report their earnings later this week. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia is set to report its earnings tomorrow, while the National Australia Bank is likely to report the same on Thursday. So what is the market expecting from CBA and NAB? Well, surely investors have got a sense of squeeze in net interest margins across the sector. The banks are feeling the heat from the structural headwinds, such as record low rates in the country, leading to a cutthroat competition in the mortgage business, combined with a rush to lock in fixed rates. Another drag on the entire banking space is coming from new regulations forcing banks to unwind committed a liquidity facility which was set up to support banks during the tough times of the COVID-19 pandemic. This has led to holding a higher threshold of liquid assets, further diminishing net interest margin. Both CBA and the NAB have noticeably expanded their mortgage book and both could post a strong growth in their respective loan books. Data from the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority showed the NAB recorded a 1.6% month-on-month increase in December 2021 across both investor and owner-occupier mortgages, the highest among the big four. CBA has also expanded its dominance in the mortgage space as credit growth has picked up. However, investors are still fretting over margin contraction. A few months back in November 2021, the bank lost a whopping $14.8 billion in market capitalization in a single session. The CBA reported a considerably lower net interest margin, which vastly offset the volume growth for the September 2021 quarter. Investors will closely track its earnings to monitor the net interest margin trend and outlook. The market would also be interested in management commentary regarding the impact of the Omicron variant in the business. The NAB and CBA share prices have been trading negative for the year. The year-to-date return of CBA stands at a negative 6.93% at the last closing at $94. That was on the 7th of February. On the other hand, the NAB has fallen 4.4% to $27.57 in the same period. Well, let's take a short break here. I'll be back with more details on this bank's very soon. Stay tuned. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkind's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkind TV. Welcome back to the Smart Market Insights Report. Well, as Australia's big four banks have had a tough time under the lockdown restrictions, their financial year 2021 results seem to have impressed the street. The banks were able to post aggregate earnings of $26.8 billion in financial year 2021, a noticeable 55% increase over the last year, according to Ernst & Young. Owing to a red-hot housing market coupled with less than expected pandemic-driven expenses, return on equity for these banks has also shot up to 9.9% from 6.6% in the last year as banks aggressively undertook share buyback programs. However, the revenue growth was concerning, whereas costs remained elevated. 
Net interest margin also declined, all thanks to historic low interest rates in the economy, giving rise to a cutthroat mortgage business competition. Also, an increasing tilt of asset mix towards the lower margin, fixed rate housing loans weighed on the markets. The low interest rate scenario would continue to put pressure on the bank's profitability over the medium term, at least until the RBA decides to tighten its monetary policy. Most economics will anticipate a rate height not before 2023. However, the Reserve Bank of Australia might need to relook at the interest rates to curb surging inflation. Meanwhile, to sustain profitable operations, banks have lowered the deposit rates to counter the squeeze on lending rates. This has also been supported by elevated household and business savings, which were used for further funding, creating a favourable funding cost environment for banks. The COVID-19 pandemic has not only forced banks to transition to a more digitised way of banking, but it's also presented an opportunity to innovate newer ways to simplify and ease up the banking services. In order to compete with new age banking models such as neobanks and other fintech companies, especially the buzzing BMPL players, banks have also been focusing on providing better customer experience and boosting digitization and simplification strategies. Housing credit has recorded a growth of almost 100% over the 12-month period ending September 2021. Refinancing has also surged for five consecutive months to August 2021 as borrowers move to lenders to offer them lower rates, taking advantage of cashback deals. So in conclusion, earnings from the big four banks remained under pressure despite much improved numbers over the last year. Apart from the challenging lockdown periods throughout the year, cutthroat competition from the fintech space such as BNPL players have dented earnings. Well, that's all from me for now. We'll be back again soon with the exclusive Smart Market Insight Show. Till then, stay watching Calkind TV for all the latest market updates and related insights. I'm Rachel signing off for now.